the um, the presentation of the of this of this conference was um, really something. We we realized that um, uh, that the, the the experience we had was quite strong with with OMA. Um, probably one of the strongest that we've lived uh, uh, collectively till now. And uh, talking about it just one day after the opening, without really having having seen uh, how other or having talked to other people what they they, they think about it is is quite a, a difficult exercise. So we we spent all day trying to, uh, to, 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 to come up with something that, um, yeah, that will give an extra I I in view. And, and we, we do have a, a presentation uh, that, that, that I will soon start. Um, but um, uh, I would also like to point out that at the end of the, uh, of, of uh, when we're, <coughs> we are done with the, the presentation, there will be a, an occasion for, uh, for questions. And, uh, uh, and, and we would rather Tell it, uh, to explain to you in uh, in, a, in, a, in a question and answer uh, way uh, the things that you want to know, uh, rather than adding to the uh, to the, the the exhibition in in, in, in a new way. So, um, could I get my uh, screen? Uh, and also, uh, me and Lionel will be will be talking. We hope for in interventions during the the presentation by by Tristan and, and Benjamin. Um, and, uh, and afterwards, we will be all four uh, available for questions. Okay. Um, we will start with one of the. Okay. Um, we will st we will point out some of the uh, earlier projects that we did uh, before uh, before uh, starting uh, uh, working with uh, Barbican and OMA on this exhibition. And one of the um, uh, largest ones uh, we did in the, in the in the past few years was uh, uh, the design of an event space for Kunstfestival des Arts, a theater festival in Brussels. We had been asked to uh, refurbish an existing lobby and to turn it into a bar and restaurant uh, space for, for festival goers. Um, so what we proposed was to make a, a terrace in, in front of the building, level with the ground floor. Um, and because the, the terrain was on a slope, did make the, the building from one side, uh, the left side, accessible to uh, wheelchairs. Uh, whereas uh, in, in normal functioning, uh, they had to go uh, to the back of the building to enter. So we used uh, rented formwork materials uh, for this uh, for this temporary structure. Um. <laughs> okay, so in in the interior we designed a, a temporary mezzanine also with the formwork materials, and um, well obviously for a, a bar, a cafe, and and a restaurant, good tables were crucial. Um, and our specifications were rather strict. We wanted the tables to be modular and stackable, easy to transport, so that they would have a life beyond the festival. Additionally, they needed to be thin, with a maximal, a maximal free height under the horizontal support, as to allow wheelchair users to sit at them. And uh, given these parameters, building self-designed tables quickly appeared irrealistic from a budget point of view, so we decided to buy some. After a quick look on the second-hand market, it appeared that used steel office tables yielded the uh, best value for money. Because of the presence of uh, the European Commission and its deal with a, second, uh, a local second-hand dealer, the Brussels market is flooded with high-quality tables. We bought 20 of them with the intention to replace the light grey tabletops in high-pressure laminate. But uh, when we took of these panels, we realized that their reverses features a, a whole series of different funky colors, light blue, orange, uh, light yellow, brown, and so on. So uh, they were too good to use. And to make each table individually. To not to use. Sorry, not too good not to use. <laughs> to make <laughs> each table individually appealing, uh, we cut these panels into pieces and uh, reassembled uh, them uh, again uh, to, the, to the structure. Uh, a second set of tables uh, for the outside terrace uh, was even simpler. We uh, basically just uh, used uh, the upside down uh, metal racks in, in, in which the, the formwork uh, elements uh, had been uh, delivered. And the feet uh, 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 proved useful as ashtrays. 
The floor itself was made uh, from reused formwork boards and the seats consisted out of cut and assembled wooden beams that we had gotten for free uh, from a company that rented us the, the rest of the material. So that same year, we were asked by um, an artist friend to make a table for the presentation of a series of audio works. Um, for that one, we used the most improbable surface, the surface material, thick slabs of Carrara marble that came from a recent building. The hanging of the marble in that building had been badly conceived and everything needed to, to be dismantled. So on one night, we extracted a few of these from the building waste container. Um, the heavy steel substructure for that table is also reuse. Originally um, um, employed as support for a workshop table in a factory that had been that had fined for bankruptcy. We bought it for a bargain. After that exhibition finished, the table was returned to us, and it's been two years since we've last considered reusing that 700 kilo table. <laughs> Sorry. Somehow the, the question of tables seems to follow us up uh, for a couple of years already now. Um, in October 2009, we, we received a request um, to help find materials to fabricate tables for uh, another bar, for another art festival that was to take place in a, in a warehouse in Brussels. They were looking for some kind of waterproof wood. Uh, we replied with a mail in which we summed up the advantages of melaminated uh, particle boards. Uh, easy to store after the event, uh, hygienic and on the second ma market cheaper than the screws you would need to make your own uh, improvised tables. So we pleaded against anything more original than uh, uh, absolutely needed. They followed us, uh, our advice and bought a series of uh, handsome white tables uh, with chrome legs for a, a few euros apiece. A few months later we got a similar question from another uh, artistic organization, this time in Ghent. They had spent 40,000 euros on the fabrication of 10 custom-made steel tables uh, a few years before. Even though the, the tables had been conceived to be flexible with various uh, rotating parts, they proved impractical now that the office was uh, used by a larger number of people than originally thought. Even though the, the tables were fabricated in uh, heavy steel tubes of 8 cm thick, uh, the wheels were detaching and the rotative axes were starting to show signs of uh, fatigue. Their suggestion, uh, quite funnily, was that we would help them sell the tables. Uh, they were designed by a, a, an architect that is locally quite famous. And that we would, uh, uh, with that money uh, uh, raised, uh, uh, help them buy something more durable. We explained to them that nobody with good sense uh, would give more than the scrap iron price and that we, we, we said that we felt very sorry for them. So, uh, VTI is uh, an association in, of actors in the field of performing arts. They asked us to refurbish their library and amongst other things they wanted uh, um, new library shelves and a huge table where 10 people could work together. Uh, instead of building one colossal new piece of furniture that would have condemned them to this arrangement for 10 years or so, or even more, we simply strapped the legs together of six more modest tables they already possessed. In the middle, we added a wire mesh cable rack. We never did the new bookshelves, neither. We thought that uh, what they had was fine. They simply needed to be told so by an outsider. We suggested them that they rather invest some money in solving a problem of lights. We applied a system whereby suspension fixtures were hung from the hooks, from hooks that fit anywhere in the gaps between the metallic strips of the existing false ceiling. That way, they can suspend the light anywhere needed, even when the table moves. Our design for uh, the offices of uh, uh, another artistic organization in Brussels in an abandoned uh, industrial complex uh, from the end of the 19th century. Um, the, the budget was very tight, again, and we focused our intervention on the strict minimum. Their previous office had been larger and their existing desks were too big for this space. So we bought a lot of smaller tables and uh, mounted them together in four uh, office islands. In between the, the legs of each two tables, we placed drawers that we salvaged from their previous uh, furniture. 
we drilled holes in the tabletops for passage of cables and provided with a cable gutter. Because we managed to keep this intervention so cheap, all in all the, the furniture costed about 4,000 euros, we could afford to invest part of the budget in uh, measures to make the space more uh, ergonomical. We placed a salvaged acoustic absorbing material on, all on, on some of the vertical surfaces. The, the ceiling panels uh, had been uh, removed because of water damage uh, before we, we started intervening. And um, besides restoring the ceiling lights, we added uh, an, an individual uh, glare-free spot on uh, each desk. Yeah. In the summer of 2010, we, we did the installation for the Belgian Pavilion at the Venice Architectural Biennale. Our project selected from some 40 different proposals addressed an issue that is seldom dealt with in discussions about architecture and design, that of the wear and tear of contemporary building materials. So in the run-up of the installation of our exhibition, we visited dozens of different sites from which we extracted pieces of moderately used building materials, so, such as a, a carpet from a social housing apartment, benches, benches from a university auditorium, a laminate floor with printed wood patterns that had been matted by use, etc. One room of the installation was dedicated to used tabletops. The most striking one uh, figured uh, a darker spot in the middle where uh, a placemat had kept the varnish from uh, decoloration from uh, sunlight. Uh, the least photographed piece in the exhibition was an IKEA tabletop in uh, yellow varnished pine wood. Uh, this, well, as you see it there. So as, as you probably know, this project was also our first encounter with OMA. Uh, they participated in the Biennale with their Chrono Chaos exhibition. So we got in contact with them and it started, uh, it, it started the beginning of a conversation on uh, uh, how we could contribute to an exhibition they had committed to doing at the Barbican Art Gallery. Eventually we accepted uh, to curate and, and design the show and started spending a lot of time in their Rotterdam office. These are their tables. Uh, they spend seven meters from feet to feet and they need ten people to move. When we started working on a model, we, we requested OMA that we could have some uh, real tables. Um, because besides the, 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 the tables from uh, the office canteen, uh, uh, all the other uh, normal tables had been removed from the building uh, by the facility management. Uh, OMA wanted to rent tables in order no, not to have to deal with the storage of the, the tables when they were not in use. And we wanted to own the tables so we could use them as we wanted. We could cut on them, we could glue on them, etc. We needed tables that we uh, could own quick and in Rotterdam. So we asked uh, our friends from uh, 2012 architects to tip us on where uh, we could buy the tables. And, um, and we had them brought uh, to the office by the uh, facility uh, management of OMA. So and this is how we use them. <coughs> because of uh, a partner meeting that was to take place in Rotterdam, OMA was now also looking to buy tables. When they learned we could use them, they bought eight of them to use once and hand over to us afterwards. They appeared quite resistant in not wanting to own these tables. Uh, a bit later, we got the table in our workspace at OMA, uh, a bit after that, we noticed on model shots we found on the OMA server that some months or years before, the exact same tables were used in the exact same workspace and apparently disappeared later on. In this image, we see pictures of the Largo Isarco project for the Fondazione Prada, probably taken the pictures taken in early uh, 2010. Could it be possible that we had bought back tables that OMA <laughs> had gotten rid of? <laughs> in, the, in the OMA Hong Kong office, the question of tables is a question of centimeters. Um, when we arrived there, uh, a whole row of people had to cramp a few centimeters tighter to make some space for us. Uh, in the meanwhile, we were still working on the scenography of the exhibition and we needed a solution for the plinths. And we weren't satisfied with the idea of uh, using painted wood or um, welded metal tubes or um, 
even though they, 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 these would be the, the, the or these were the first simple solutions we had in mind, and anything else would uh, was proving to be more complicated or uh, extremely unflexible. So we made a mock-up, and uh, we started exploring how to use the tables. Um, the advantages that were easily noticeable were, were the price and the flexibility. Uh, the, 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 the tables could easily be cut, the legs could be made longer, and, and so on. Um, in the Anadin office table, a lot of intelligence can be found. Uh, first of all, the surface is a combination of cheap particle board with a high quality top layer in melamine. This melamine feels cold in summer but warm in winter. <laughs> it is waterproof and easily cleanable. It's very hard and resists scratches. Our advice is unless you have extraordinary needs, never buy a table in any material but melaminated particle board. <laughs> A second intelligence is in the legs. Uh, during use, the legs are sturdily fixed to the steel frame, but by removing four bolts only, the legs can be detached so that the table takes minimal storage space. A connection like this takes industrial precision. It is not something that you can easily achieve in a small workshop. The legs are standard tubes and can easily be cut to the right length. So we, um, uh, we bought all the tables the Rotterdam dealer had left and uh, brought them with us to London. Uh, the, the tables enabled us to work directly in, in the space, uh, whereas splints uh, or steel structures uh, would have uh, been ordered uh, weeks before uh, we, we, we arrived in, in London. Uh, our specifications uh, were, were, were very uh, minimal. We wanted tables uh, in light gray, removable feet, uh, and a melaminated surface uh, of standard dimensions. So as building blocks for the scenography, these tables could ad adapt to all our needs in terms of uh, presenting diverse materials. So un unmodified tables was used, for instance, in a secret room for the Zebrano samples and the booklet uh, on the textures. While uh, we used a, a whole tabletop with shortened legs for the models of the Milstein seating layout, and uh, we cut table tops where needed for smaller pieces, uh, combining different surface size with different uh, lengths uh, of legs uh, would allow us or allowed us to do um, pretty much what we wanted, uh, like raising this little model of the Prada Fondazione, uh, the Lago Esacco uh, project in Milan to the visitor's eye level. Yeah, in a more playful way, the tables are, of the shop are cut so that a rigid layout could be realized. So we used the tables to secure the glass samples of the Rotterdam or to incline the Cornell Hall model. That's, uh, that's the, the, the end of our presentation. Um, yeah, we we're, 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 um, we're switch now to two questions. Thank you. Oh, we, sorry, we had more. <laughs> <laughs> we had more. We have more slides, but no more notes. So um, let's yeah. let's let's see what that does. Um, these are images uh, of the shop. Yeah, wait, maybe we can say something on on uh, what well, these. So we we wanted to make the, uh, a clear distinction between the, the the area of the shop and the area where uh, books and lectures can be browsed. So. Uh, these tabletops are also practical in the sense that you can directly print images on them. The images that we printed here are snapshots taken only a few days before the opening of the exhibition in the Rotterdam offices uh, of whatever was laying on the tables there. Uh, yeah, and, and the desk that is in the same space is, uh, is also just two tables with a front panel uh, that was salvaged from the, from the previous exhibition. Uh, and uh, 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 this one, uh, I think, is our absolute uh, favorite uh, to be able to place the, 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 the model of um, uh, the Villa Bordeaux um, that comes uh, straight from the, the Pompidou Center to be able to, to decide really in the space uh, how we could uh, 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 display it, on, uh, on what size, on what kind of uh, uh, surface, uh, was an extreme luxury that we, uh, that we own to these uh, banal grey uh, melaminated tables. <laughs> so 
as um, Martin said, now is the opportunity to ask some questions. We do have a roving mic, so please be a little patient when you're urgent with your questions. Um, have we got any questions straight off? <laughs> okay, I'll have a go then. Um, I was going to ask you um, about your coup de coeur, but um, I've just had a lesson in that. The answer is the tables. Um, but perhaps beyond that, you could uh, enlighten us on the particular discoveries or the points of amazement that you had in making this exhibition. Go ahead. Um, okay, uh, I will... Um, we are often seen as material fetishists, so our relation to material uh, and materials um, uh, is an area of, of high sensitivity uh, and uh, it got really uh, changed or put under stress uh, during the time of this exhibition. Uh, we um, were put in a strange situation. Many times, in m most of the times, we found an uh, object in the, in the archive or sometimes in the trash um, and then we decided to put them, uh, uh, to select them in the for uh, putting them in the exhibition. So first we had to mention that we wanted to take them and then they were entered into uh, a database that we created so they could be catalogued and uh, measured and weighed uh, and uh, uh, we could trace the origin of them and uh, write the captions, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So once these items were put in the, the database, their status was actually, without uh, our knowing, changing. So. Uh, once all these items uh, were arriving in, uh, uh, in the exhibition space, uh, they were taken out of um, crates and we could not touch them uh, during the first, first days. Only dedicated personnel could touch them with white gloves. Uh, and then uh, we had to uh, negotiate a little bit to be able to touch them because uh, in the previous exhibitions, we um, uh, practically, practically we spent just one month moving the items in the space quite freely and hanging them on the wall and changing our mind, etc., etc. In that case, we had to ask people to move them and then to rotate them. And then uh, we, it was quite impractical. So um, uh, we discovered a whole new realm of uh, uh, relations to materials uh, that ranges from uh, relation, relations with uh, loans, which uh, only, uh, uh, I would say, imported personnel can handle. Uh, you need someone to, to be there to check every movement of the piece. Uh, around the loan, you can actually not uh, move anything around a certain perimeter. So um, uh, it's not a matter of uh, uh, trusting your movements. It's, uh, the, 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 it's like the, the model is surrounded by... Uh, uh, protected area. A protected area. Uh, so uh, I can remember a, a moment in which... Uh, uh, Rem wanted the, the CCTV model turned uh, 45 degrees, but it was, um, uh, and understandably, it was impossible administratively to do it without an approval that had to come. And so uh, we had to wait for an approval to move the, the slightly the model. And uh, the approval was needed because, because it was next to the uh, Pompidou loan. Exactly. So around the Pompidou loan, you can really imagine a, a sphere, a half sphere of 1 meter 50. Uh, that you cannot <laughs> move into or touch. And uh, uh, so uh, and this quite complex uh, relation, uh, uh, with, uh, for example, I can remember Corinna playing the role of uh, um, uh, having to, to notice us and learn us this kind of relation with materials. Uh, um, I would take uh, other examples, for example, small models we just took with bare hands in, in the archive in New York. And then uh, we had to handle them really with white gloves permanently, and we could not. Um, uh, another example, more, 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 Striking. more clear. Striking uh, a piece of uh, pink foam in which holes had been uh, uh, made. Um, it's a piece that did not survive uh, into the exhibition, but um, um, uh, it was just a piece of pink foam that they used for insulation. And uh, we just put, uh, took it on a building site, and we, we had to manipulate it with white gloves, and we had to hesitate drilling holes inside of it to put it on the wall. So it was really a, um, a lot of our work was a, a negotiation of our relation to those materials and negoti negotiation with OMA. Uh, and a, a, a question arising a lot is, was the question of the value of the material. Um, 
Um, you can talk about monetary value of a material, that's how the insurance would talk. Uh, we see the value of the material in a, more, a less quantitative way. Uh, and uh, we had really to deal with uh, several layers of um, complexity for each material. But you, so you decided not to answer Corina's question. Corina, <laughs> 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 I think, uh, yeah. That, uh, I told this uh, as a, uh, this is for me the, the most striking lesson. Uh, it was a discovery. Yeah, it was a discovery, yeah. It was a discovery. How about the rest of you? Any other discoveries or favorite objects, favorite areas of the exhibition? Most revelatory part of the process? I have one. Um, the, yeah, I have, I have more than one, but there's one for me that, that is really, that is really uh, uh, amazing. It's uh, uh, videos from uh, the beginning of 2005. Uh, it's a celebration that was held at, uh, at CCTV. Uh, and and uh, it was not a groundbreaking ceremony, or it was not the topping off. Of the of, of the building, but it was a, a celebration of the beginning of work, and uh, and uh, the, on the exhibition guide um, that is available in the in, in, in the exhibition, uh, yeah, you, you see a, 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 a picture of uh, the confetti that was uh, exploded into the into the air, and just the idea that uh, you celebrate the, the beginning of work uh, is is I think something that we uh, that we had found striking. Uh, uh, yeah, another one. Um, <laughs> uh, when you are on the first floor, so uh, for those who already visited the, the exhibition, uh, on the first floor, in the part that is covered by a wall and uh, with sometimes uh, holes in it, uh, there is a place in which you have one of the pre existing holes of the previous exhibition. Um, and if you look through it and you look at the wall on the left part, you see. Um, uh, a frame, uh, it was an NAI loan, uh, a ZKM okay. drawing that was made uh, 15 years ago. Uh, it was an, an unexpected uh, arrival, arrival in the crate. Actually, it was, there was a mistake in the numbering, so uh, we had three um, loans from the NAI, and for diplomatic reasons, if you have them uh, in the crates, you have to place them in the exhibition. So one of them is was somewhat related, so we went into the, the structures room, uh, one of them was finally uh, quite fit to go into the um, Jacques Tati room of the one-week movement. And the last one uh, fit nowhere, uh, but uh, it was uh, um, an astonishing coincidence. Uh, actually, when you look at it, you see uh, the design of the ground floor. Uh, and we discovered the, the, that, that loan, I think, two days before the opening. And it was actually literally the drawing of the the design of the ground floor. So if you go on the first floor, look for the hole, look on your left side, and uh, find the difference. So, so we, uh, a loan that we uh, mistakenly requested, yeah. uh, that had been drawn some 20, 25 years uh, uh, before the opening of the exhibition, uh, that we discovered two days before the opening was the exact uh, or almost exact representation of what we had drawn uh, for, uh, for, for the event space uh, downstairs, which was also not decided, decided by us because we just recycled the previous design. So it's like a, a whole series of coincidences that, that, that uh, um, yeah. But I, 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 I just noticed that uh, what Corina's question, till now nobody has answer, answered something yeah, that is, that is uh, <laughs> specific to OMA. We all said like, oh, I like uh, something that is probably standard practice in China, or I, uh, I, 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 I saw this coincidence, maybe we should. And it didn't answer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's specific. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, it's a difficult question in the sense that these are 400 coup de coeur. Um, 450, I'll have you know. 450. So, uh, but uh, w w while discussing on, on uh, um, what we wanted to talk about, there is, uh, and maybe I can mention then one coup de coeur. Uh, we're glad that we have it because we, we thought it, it would be too difficult to do. It's, it's the, the mock up of uh, one of the nodes of CCTV, the, the white one. Um, uh, let's say that obviously it's a it's a replica of a, a model that was made by uh, the people at OMA Rotterdam uh, in in the run up to the building of CCTV to, to evaluate how that um, how that would work in space. But um, 
it's it's one of the many instances that we've met of uh, uh, things being directly simulated with a mock-up uh, at uh, at OMA in the sense that uh, you, do, you you draw things, you 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 make renders of things, but you build them physically as well to to test uh, their impact. And uh, in in the the program booklet, um, you will see a pretty more impressive mock-up uh, which was done for. Um, the Shenzhen Stock Exchange, w which is a mock-up of the facade that is as big as a basketball field. Um, and w it had an impact on our way of functioning. The, the, we noticed that in OMA there is a, um, or at OMA there, there is really a, a huge importance given to, to the demonstration to true uh, physical object. And, um, uh, we, we noticed that we ourselves, after a while, started to uh, to have the reflex of, of uh, replicating everything in 3D. Um, also, the, the fact that we we've been doing so much in, in a model um, is uh, is something that initially we were kind of um, resisting to, mm -hmm. and then OMA was insisting so much on on that model. That <laughs> eventually, we did it that model at one tenth of a scale, and uh, we we did build all uh, yeah tiny models of uh, everything we wanted to have in the exhibition, also at scale one tenth. So these were models of models um, that we had to build, uh, and I remember that the first ones we did were pretty rough. Like uh, we had the, the model of the, the Villa Bordeaux was simply a block of foam uh, on, on the four facades of which um, we had uh, color photocopies of, of the, the, the lateral views of it. But then uh, we got better at it. And yeah, and we <laughs> used the, the foam cutting machine. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you think but this model making way of working will be something that you take forward beyond this exhibition? I've never made so many slides in my life than in the last uh, six months because it's not only it's not only models, it's not only physical uh, mockups, it's also uh, thinking in, in in PowerPoint slides. Uh, uh, you you and went col color copies and color copies. And color yeah. copies. actually, we bought a, a color printer uh, uh, <laughs> very <laughs> recently. Uh, when you were coming back from Rotterdam, we said, "Let's buy a printer." printer. <laughs> <laughs> So we noticed that, uh, for instance, at a certain point we were, we had gotten unable of uh, telling something in a simple conversation when we had to do a presentation for OMA. We had a booklet with us, with slides printed in color on it, and we just said, we want to do this, <laughs> <laughs> and we have another ID. Um, yeah, at a certain moment, uh, to explain the idea that we wanted to show a video in the space, we made a, a, a mock-up, so a foam a, a cardboard uh, <laughs> uh, with a, a picture of a TV on it, with inside uh, one frame of the video Photoshop hanging against the wall, and, and that was our our, 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 our presentation, and, it's <laughs> like, and you spend the whole night uh, gluing color copies to, to foam boards, and you're like, what is happening? <laughs> <laughs> Do we have any questions in the audience? Yes, I was wondering, as a team, because you, you are like, a successful demonstration of working as a team, so I was wondering how you organize yourself. Do you have specialists, or is just mixing everything together and having IDs raising from this mix? Um, but maybe um, I should start by saying we're presented here, the four of us, as, as being a rotor, but uh, th that's not exactly true. And on, on, uh, the rotor is an entity that uh, expands and, and uh, shrinks again when, when needed. And on this project, uh, uh, we have uh, Renaud Hardigan, Melanie Tam, and uh, Tina Segers that were uh, intimately involved. And then we were also held by uh, Lionel Billet and, and Michael Guillot, which are sitting here, and, and, uh, and many others. So uh, it's, um, that's one first thing to say. We have, uh, we have many friends, and when we need them, they, uh, they are there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and that is fantastic. But. Um, for the rest, I, I think it's a, it's a question of uh, uh, experience. We've been working for five years together now, so uh, um, we can pretty much... Um 
there are things that, that, that you know that somebody will, will want to have the last word on it, and there are things that, that, that there are entire domains that you can uh, handle almost to, your, to yourself. For instance, I, I really like doing uh, the, the contracts, and nobody else cares, so, uh, <laughs> so I, I have the full authority on that, whereas uh, I don't really care about layout questions, and, and, and in those discussions, I'm, I'm really not, not present at all. Uh, and other people take a, a high role on it, and then the, uh, the then there are the questions on which we have we all have uh, an opinion, and the, and those we Text we time. just yeah brute force <laughs> debate <laughs> till the end uh, on, on, on solving yeah. them. But usually everybody always has an opinion on something, but. It often can be rather a weak opinion, and then it's a question of finding. That depends whose opinion it is. No, <laughs> and your perceptions of their no sure, but, but then it's it's a question of looking on who has a strong opinion on it, and mm. then uh, and then it's it's uh, is the one with a really strong opinion that uh, that will get what he wants, and that can really change. I mean, it I depends on, on the kind of opinion. idea. Yeah, opinion. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but usually it both come together. <laughs> a case in point. Um, perhaps I'm going to ask a further question because I think um, the Barbican has a trajectory of doing architecture exhibitions um, and I think both within what we have done in the field of architecture but also more broadly. This is a very, very different type of architecture exhibition and really quite surprising if you think you're going to see buildings and models, though we have just been speaking about models. And I wanted to perhaps ask you to maybe elaborate on how that has come about and indeed because some of you are not trained architects whether that influenced the process through which you created this exhibition it may not be the case at all but I do think it's a an answer that I would like to have or find out more about it's, it's funny that you say that it's not a traditional architecture exhibition because this is I think for, for me uh, kind of a, a a proto architecture exhibition it's uh, it's it's quite simple actually it has models it has architectural pictures it has detailed studies of course the materials that you well i think there is more process in the exhibition in material form but i think the way you're telling a story about an architecture practice is very very different to those more standard or more classic architecture exhibitions the, the idea of narrative or retrospective is absolutely not there uh, maybe I can answer, uh, not from the point of view, view of not being an architect, or not trained, but being mm. trained as an architect, uh, let's say that it was extremely helpful and, and necessary to have non-architecturally trained uh, members of the, the team in the sense that otherwise uh, it's, it's really hard. When you know Rem Cole has since you're 18 and you've been fed with uh, his writings uh, from your 18 till now, that you're bound to look at uh, his work and the work of OMA in a, in a certain fashion. And then it's, it's extremely helpful to be brought off track by uh, people being able to look at this work in a completely fresh way. And, and I think uh, that was uh, absolutely uh, fundamental for us to, to, to be helpful in this or, or useful in this um, venture. And I think that we've also um Quite soon in the process, we've, we've decided um, that okay, the exhibition was uh, was on OMA, but that we were looking for um, some kind of uh, metaphorical quality uh, in, in in the situations that we were uh, uh, seeing. Yeah, you know, what 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 does it mean that that uh, um, what does it mean that you you see a, a side visit done by uh, by six youngsters that are, are about to 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 draw a, a master plan for. A, uh, 500 square kilometers in, in, in China uh, that, that visit that, that, that uh, land for the first time. Um, uh, is, is, it, is it really specific to OMA? I think we don't know the other offices of, we haven't seen the, 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 the backstage of, of, uh, of, of the other offices. But in the, in, the, in the best case, it's not specific to OMA. Because if it's not specific to OMA, then, then, then you found something that, that, that is really striking and, 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 and that goes beyond <coughs> that. That is a view. Uh, for, from, from with, with OMA as a, as a tool, you're, you're saying something about uh, about everything else, um, and and we've we've tried not to not to say okay, this is where OMA stops and this is where uh, the, the consultant's his work uh, begins, or this is uh, what the client wants. Uh, uh, so let's not talk about that. We we really talk about it in, or we want to talk about it in 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 a, in a very. Um, 
um, um, connected way. Um. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, perhaps this might be an opportunity to call it a day if there are no other. Oh, fantastic. We have another question in the back of the audience. There's a mic just coming towards you now. How much input did OMA have? They surrendered. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, input is, I think, the, the, the right word. Uh, in, in the sense that uh, if you're about to go through 3.5 million images, you like to know <laughs> where, where, where to start. And there, there, there are things in this exhibition that would never have been there if it wasn't for uh, 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 an eager project manager at OMA that, that wanted this wanted one specific element of, uh, of the project he was uh, uh, working on uh, represented in, 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 in an intelligent way. And, um, and, and also with, uh, with the partners, we've had, uh, uh, we'd ha we've had conversations with Victor van der Gijs on, on economy. We ha we've had uh, conversations with Sho on, 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 on uh, 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 the building situation uh, post-crisis in, in the United States and, and, and so on. And they, uh, they really contributed um, uh, in, 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 a, in a very uh, uh, proactive kind of way, uh, even. Um, but there was, uh, uh, we, we were leading the conversation, let's, let's say it like that. Uh, uh, if, if it was more like, uh, oh, if you're interested in that, then you should look at this project. Uh, there, was not, there was very little uh, pressure uh, on, on us. So were they too busy to do it, or why did they surrender? Yeah, that's a question you should ask them. Uh, <laughs> they're quite busy. Uh, I think in part also it was a reflection on content, which is near a decade ago, which was a show that they had created themselves. And the idea of having somebody else looking in would give us a, or provide a very different and a greater insight into their work. So I think it was in part in response to that that the idea of surrender came about. And uh, when there's a collective of six busy people, the surrender is easier. There was another question, yes. Um, you mentioned something of uh, thinking in PowerPoint slides. I found it interesting, but could you tell me a bit more about that? Um, uh, yeah, it's it's um, it's 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 addictive. That's that's for sure. Um, it's like uh, carefully crafting how you will lead somebody to a to a to a certain conclusion, asking the question in such a way that that um, that that he he is already. It's 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 a rhetorical exercise, and I think it's a, a relatively new one, uh, and and I think it's heavily influenced by uh, by, by by this 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 image. I mean, if you um, if you show an ugly picture of a table and you say, "Do we really want tables?" then 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 the answer is no. If you if you if you show a pretty image of a table and you say. Do we really want to spend all this money on uh, uh, fiberboard boards painted white and they will be dirty in a week? Then, then the answer is also no. So you can, you can kind of lead the conversation uh, uh, with this new tool. Uh, perhaps as well, uh, the speed of um, or the efficiency of the means of communications were a uh, discovery also. Uh, when you have a meeting with I would say several partners or when involved or where, where, when you are a lot around the table is totally different from what we're used to, to, to have. Uh, hours of discussion on our side, which we take the time to uh, place arguments, etc. etc. Et so um, when we talked about uh, model making, mockups and uh, making color prints, etc. Cetera, et cetera, um, it's like these are actually tools to, to craft uh, very intense moments of uh, communication and uh, decision uh, and when you are around the, the table everything has to be there to, 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 to communicate to everyone and um, uh, if you need something uh, it has to be at <coughs> one second distance it's like a collective brain uh, 
Yeah, if you want a decision, all the options should be on the table because if, if, if there's one option that is not on the table and that is raised uh, during the conversation, then the meeting is postponed. Then it's like, okay, let's work on all the options and come back when we can see it and make a, make a, uh, a decision. But it's, it's the question of the PowerPoint presentation is interesting in the sense that we, uh, at a certain point on the server, we discovered one file which has been um, uh, presented to us as the very first PowerPoint presentation at the uh, OMA, which um, was done in 2005. And uh, um, I mean, it's a, a pretty significant uh, uh, file since it was uh, a power, uh, presentation done by uh, Victor van der Gijs, who was then appointed uh, the, the new uh, managing partner of OMA. And uh, we think, I mean, and, and uh, many people at, at OMA, we've, the, the, the many people we've talked to, it, that has been a hinge moment in, in the history of OMA in the sense that uh, uh, since then, a, a new culture has um, developed uh, far better organized uh, and that, I mean, we could talk for a, a long while on, on the, the, the changes that occurred by then, but uh, one of these changes is the, the appearance of the PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> um, it seems like you had a lot of freedom in putting together the show. But is there anything that you'd have done differently, or is there anything that you would have liked access to that you might not have had? Uh, access, it's easy to answer. We had access to everything. Uh, showing, there are things that, that we would probably have wanted to show, but as OMA is, is so intertwined with, uh, with, with its clients and with, with, with its projects, uh, some things. Uh, Cannot cannot be shown, cannot even be uh, uh, discussed, and yeah. But I, I I don't think there are large regrets. I, I think there are some some spectacular things in this show that at first um, had been said uh, could not been shown, and 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 um, I don't have large regrets. I don't ah, know. There was a yeah. The there is a beautiful. Well, we only saw the pictures. A beautiful uh, metal model of CCTV. That is still in China, uh, rusting. Uh, oh yeah, that one. <laughs> the, the the shaking table model. Mm -hmm. So it, it's the model that was made for uh, one of the tests uh, done in preparation of the CCTV uh, uh, project. But uh, the story of, of the model is uh, is told in the exhibition in the rooms on on the structures, etc. It's uh, uh, it it was uh, prepared at uh, a Chinese university. It was crucial in testing the feasibility of the, the whole project. Um, it, it probably has taken weeks to, to assemble, and uh, the test went well. So uh, that, that was the green light for the whole project. But after that, um, so to, in, in, in a moment, it was decided that uh, CCDV could be built and was uh, earthquake resistant. But since then, that, uh, that model has been rusting away indeed in, uh, next to the building site. Uh, on a parking lot, and it would have been fantastic, obviously, to bring that over and to put it on the sculpture court. We've been talking about that, haven't we? Yes. We were looking uh, for except, sponsors. And except that it's it's eight meter high and it's probably like twenty five tons or something. But <laughs> <laughs> if you would have thrown a, a, an abject amount of money to it, it would have been able. But uh, we thought we we had more interesting yeah, ways to spend money. We always almost got Prada at throwing that amount of money at it, but yeah. <laughs> There were a couple of other questions, yes. As we can see from the title slide, the exhibition's title is OMA Progress, but we just had a really interesting story of your progress um, as a practice kind of through the medium of tables. To what extent would it be fair to say that for you guys, part of the exhibition is actually rotor progress with content supplied by OMA? In, in, there was an interesting uh, uh, conversation with, with Renier de Graaf, who is uh, known for not taking a, a, a leaf before his mouth while, while talking. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he was saying, how do you get, um, if, if you're not selling expertise, 
uh, if you're not a structural engineer or, or, or something that you can calculate, how do you get people uh, uh, to pay you basically for learning something? Uh, OMA is not, uh, uh, or AMO, uh, uh, the, the, the research uh, department of, of, of OMA. AMO is not an expert on, on, on virtually uh, nothing. They, they just have a kind of a commitment to, to, to certain subjects. And, uh, and I think we, 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 we kind of identify in, in this. Uh, uh, in the Venice Biennale, there was an interview uh, uh, um, with, with Tristan, uh, and the title of the interview says, who says curating is a word? Um, and, and, and now we, we, uh, uh, we are curating a show without, I mean, I think we, we, we really slowly found out what it meant uh, to be a curator. We had a, I had a discussion with a, a, a friend of us who, uh, who, who works uh, at, uh, uh, at the Fondazione Prada, uh, uh, and, uh, and she said, congratulations, uh, I can confirm <laughs> this, is a, this is an exhibition. <laughs> <It's> a <laughs> you've, you've worked as a curator, There's, yeah. I, I don't know if that answers the question. <laughs> but uh, it's true that, uh, yeah, Martin was referring to, to René talking about the AMO projects and, and, uh, and the impression of being thrown um, into new situations in which you, had to, you have to reinvent your expertise or your expertise position. And, and that it, it can be done by applying other types of knowledge that you have and that can be useful. That's, I think that's uh, the, the way. Uh, AMO tries to, to operate and to proceed, and, and quite successfully so, probably. Um, we also have the impression that we're uh, tumbling from one project in, into the other, where we systematically lack expertise. And at some point, uh, moments, uh, I would say, stop it, um, <laughs> because it's, it's extremely demanding uh, to, to, uh, uh, not to be able to fall back on, on routine. So we have to be inventive in, in different ways. And uh, yeah, that is. Um, uh, and it means, for instance, that we, 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 uh, we can hardly subcontract. We, I mean, a any decision is potentially an important decision. Um, we, have no, we have no trajectory. So we cannot say, OK, that part, let's give it to an intern. Or, or we have no protocol mm -hmm. either. Uh, which can be useful, obviously, if you want to be efficient, having a protocol and saying, okay, in this situation, one, two, three, use the manual. Yeah, and, and some, some months ago, I sent an email announcing or requesting an, or an Operation Victor. Um, in, inside? In, inside inside Rotary, Rotary, yeah, uh, to uh, get, get some protocol. Or Explain so. Operation Victor. Then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Victor van der Gers is, is, as Lionel said, the, the, the manager of OMA, and he's uh, he's the one that, that keeps the the, the the office running from a from a, a practical point of view, from a business point of view, and yeah. a, pr a business point of view, and uh, and and we we would need somebody like that. That would be really, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but we disagree on that. But, but uh, in the exhibition, you will see it uh, in the. Um, uh, which room again? Uh, adaptation room. Uh, there is a wall with uh, a lot of PowerPoint slides, uh, and uh, that date from 2006 to 2010. Yeah, and it's a kind of uh, language of uh, way of ex talking that you might, um, uh, if you confront that to a somewhat romantic uh, image of OMA, old school, uh, Office of Metropolitan Architecture. Uh, school, and then uh, it uh, yeah. there is a, some kind of gap between them. Uh, yeah, one of them one of those slides says uh, in in two thousand and eight at at uh, the outbreak of the or the, the the when when the results of the crisis were starting to feel uh, said uh, uh, OMA let's go for the low hanging fruit, <coughs> which is which is really something that you don't expect to uh, to hear from such a, a an office or let's not let's. Uh, stay low on uh, developing new ideas and let's monetize uh, what we already have. Uh, it's it's really strange that that an economical crisis provokes uh, such a such a reaction. I think. Yeah. Okay. Do we have any further questions? Yes. Perfect. Um, I was wondering in how far the. Um, 
If they saw work with the OMA, changed your view on the OMA? Did it change your view? For example, you said that you have been fed with the text of Rem Kolahas since you're 18, so you must have a strong bound to him. Is it changed now as you had to deal with thousands of PowerPoint slides, for example? <laughs> um, yeah, certainly, but I mean, no, the, 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 the um, Huh. It's it's a, it's a really tough question you're asking there. I think you, you, in any case you have um, uh, one thing that I grew and, and I think we all grew really aware of is is uh, the is how complicated it is to run a business of 280 architects um, these days, in probably any days, but uh, uh, because you have. The, the, um, it's an instrument that you need to make uh, these great projects that you have. Um, because otherwise you, you, you can't do it. But it, it comes at, at a cost in terms of human investment. So, uh, um, as you know, you have hundreds of people that have, uh, or thousands of people that have worked for OMA. There is a, a replacement rate that is, uh, that is huge, and, and, and the, the work that you see in the exhibition has, is collective work that has been produced by hundreds of people. And they uh, they gave often th their best lives, uh, the the best years of their lives to uh, to, to producing this, um, and uh, it's so so the the OMA is like a fountainhead of ideas, uh, spouting ideas uh, all the time. Some of them get get realized and, and are really interesting, but uh, uh, to to be able to do so, you you have to. You need to have an organization that is managed, and you also need to, to uh, make sacrifices. You need to uh, make work that is of lesser quality. You need to yield to uh, expectations of clients. And uh, all the, the ramifications of that is something that we grew fully aware of. And, and I think all the people working at OMA are, are pretty much aware of that. So you, you have the. You have uh, even Renier van der Graaf uh, in, in what he told us, uh, because he's now he's really a senior, but he, he arrived something like uh, 11 years ago at OMA. He said he was he was really struck um, by the, the contrast b between what he he had expected and the aura that he um, well, that, that he felt around OMA, and and then what he saw on the field, which is a, a, a messy process, and. Uh, with uh, with many sacrifices, so that is I think that is really something that we we, uh, we realized. But, but you cannot. I, I think uh, I, I didn't know much about OMA before. It, so so it's not about change of point of view. But I would like to uh, nuance what you say because it's not a question of disillusion. Uh, 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 something like uh, uh, this big OMA, and actually we found out that it's a company. Oh. Bummer. Uh, it's 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 just a, a layer of complexity that 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 you probably uh, uh, don't expect and, uh, and 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 compromise, which is also something you you, you don't expect, but which it's not necessarily a, a bad thing. Mm -hmm. or, uh, or no, no, no. Indeed, you shouldn't see it like that. But that is when uh, we were talking about the, the entanglement of things that we we try to render in the exhibition like uh, not distinguishing the architect from the, the client, for instance, because at, at a certain point when they work together on a project, they, they got completely uh, intertwined. Uh, it's, um, <laughs> we don't think that's interesting to make these <laughs> distinctions and, and to speak about uh, good and bad. And I think the people at OMA are extremely uh, aware of the fact that there is n no such thing as the autonomy of architecture as a form of art, mm, yeah. uh, and uh, we've people have been saying, uh, OMA collaborators have been saying that to us uh, on on many different levels. That is, uh, it's, it, there is simply no such thing, and it's it's only when you look at architecture as a as a, an entangled thing that is uh, uh, connected to the world as it is that it becomes interesting. Okay, perhaps really that is the time to say, do go downstairs, enjoy the exhibition, and uh, I think you'll be surprised at how much is in there. I come back to the question about what you might not have been able to show. Um, there is a wealth of material, and there are subjects there that I think today are very, very pressing, 
Um, there's a room about site visits, which is deeply interesting. But there's also a room that contains entirely confidential material. I suggest you go and find it. Um, the <coughs> exhibition is open till 10 p.m., so now's your time. But do also come back throughout the run of the show. We are open through to the 19th of February, and uh, each of the partners are coming to speak. Uh, there are tours to the new OMA building from the Barbican on Saturdays. There's lots of opportunity. Um, and lastly, it remains to say thank you very, very much indeed to Rotor, both for this evening, for talking about the project and how they came to bring the exhibition to the Barbican, but also for having curated the show. It's been a deep pleasure. Thank you. You guys will have to help me uh, um, to be sure that I don't forget anybody. But uh, I really want to, to thank uh, in return, um, I mean, first of all, the, the Barbican uh, and the Barbican curatorial team. Corinna, you just spoke, but also Jane Allison, um, who has been uh, co-curating this show with, uh, with Corinna, and Carrie Rittenbach. Um, then the whole, uh, all the other uh, Barbican collaborators uh, like Emma and uh, I, maybe we, we should uh, start. Uh, Emma, um, uh, and uh, yeah. Uh, uh, no, no, that's, that's so what I mean, that's what I mean. <laughs> but then uh, obviously uh, many thanks to all the people uh, uh, at uh, OMA we have been collaborating. I'm just saying this now because we, we will not, uh, we'll be leaving soon and we will not have the opportunity to restress it, but uh, I know that uh, uh, many of the OMA collaborators we've been working with uh, on this show uh, are here tonight, not Annika Abelak, who was uh, chief of the, the OMA team for this exhibition, but uh, um, uh, I see uh, Paul, um, um, Anna Fekia, Anna Fekia, Anna Dana, Fekia Dana, Dana uh, uh, Emma, Emma. Um, Khalid. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm really sorry, I'm, I'm completely... <laughs> we should have um, prepared this, I'm uh, really sorry. Yeah. Might I suggest that we all go downstairs, we can carry on the conversation yes. <laughs> in yeah, the sure. exhibition, and there are many more thanks to be had there. I think Rotor will be joining us in the exhibition, so there are perhaps chances for a few more questions, okay. or thanks. Thank you.